I'm Nicola Morgan and this is my brain. In many ways our brains are in our hands because there are loads of things we can choose to do to make them work better. I'm a teenage novelist but I'm also a specialist in the brain and how it works and the teenage brain and stress. And people ask me questions. I'd love you or your school to ask a question and I'll record my answer, especially for you. So if you'd like to ask a question, go to my website at www.nicolamorgan.com and on the contact page you'll find details about how to ask the question. Let's see who has asked a brainy question today. Today's question is from the Head of Library at Queen Elizabeth's Grammar School in Lancashire. So I'll read out the question to you. We all know that sleep helps with stress, but during revision and exams, sleep tends to go on hold. I've talked to many students who have revised well into the early hours, only to find that they were exhausted the following morning and really were not able to do their best in the exam. So the question really is, how do you get the best sleep possible when you're under the stress of exams and revision? And the first point to say, though, is referring to that comment about students revising late into the night, the night before exams, well, firstly, um, it's confession time because I used to do that too. Having said that, when I was at school, a long, long time ago, people didn't know how the brain learns and we also didn't know what sleep was for. It might sound a bit obvious that sleep is to refresh you and rest you, but it's about more than that. And scientists now know that one of the really important things that happens in our brain when we sleep is that at certain stages of sleep, so several times during the night, our brain rehearses what we were learning during the day and consolidates it, put it puts it into parts of the brain that are going to make it um, firmer, stronger knowledge and easier to recall when we need it. So the problem with revising late into the night is not just that you'll be tired, but also more importantly that you are not having as many of those opportunities during sleep to consolidate the learning that you did. So the best possible sleep that you can get is going to give you more of a chance of actually learning your material anyway. So you might think that revising late into the night is the way to do it, but actually that is not going to be the best way to do it. But I also think it's really important to say that you shouldn't panic about sleep. It's such a common experience that when we're worried about things, something for the next day, especially an exam, that we, we may well find it hard to get to sleep. And then we lie awake and we're panicking, thinking, oh, if I don't get to sleep in the next hour or the next two hours or whatever, then I'm going to feel terrible in the morning. Well, not really, no, because as long as that's not happening every night, then you can actually manage on less sleep than you think and particularly when you've got something high pressure to do because when you get into that exam you're going to have adrenaline, one of the stress chemicals which actually makes us perform really well as long as it doesn't get towards panic and I have strategies for that on my website um, but you needn't worry too much about not being able to get to sleep before the exam because the adrenaline is going to carry you through and allow you to perform at your best so don't lie awake panicking Having said that, you do want to get the best sleep possible and to fall asleep as easily as possible because no one likes lying awake. So, I have quite a few bits of advice about that. It's all also on my website, but the main points are to do with the hour before you want to fall asleep. So, supposing you decide that the time you want to fall asleep is 10 o'clock doesn't matter what it is but just supposing it's 10 o'clock so from 9 o'clock onwards you're going to start your pre-bed winding down routine and the word routine is important as well because our brains like routines they recognize them and if you can do the same few things in the same order each evening then quite quickly your brain is going to recognize that and realize it as a trigger for oh yes this is the time when I need to start feeling sleepy so an hour before you want to feel sleepy you need to start doing certain things one of the most important things and probably the thing you should do first is to remove daylight from your bedroom so obviously especially if it's light outside, close the curtains. And if your curtains are very thin, or your blind, the blind is very thin, and the light is still getting through, then see if you can 
um, get whatever adults are responsible for you to invest in thicker curtains or a thicker blind because if you can get sunlight, get daylight out of your room it's going to start to show your brain that it's night time and your brain is going to release the sleep chemicals and you're more likely to feel sleepy. There is another way apart from sunlight in which daylight is getting into your bedroom and that is through screens. So your phone, your computer, all of those screens, tablets and everything, anything that has a backlight, so a light shining from behind it. The problem with that sort of light is that it mimics, it's the same type of light wave as daylight. So it's not going to matter too much if you you know you look at something for a few seconds but if you're looking at your phone or your computer screen or whatever for a substantial amount of time again it's tricking your brain into thinking it's daytime because it is like daylight so you're not going to like this but if you can switch off all of those screens all your screens um, that have got lights you know, a backlight behind them then uh, an hour before you want to feel sleepy then that could well have um, a beneficial effect and help you to feel sleepy also all of those screens may if they're switched on bring some kind of message to you so if you've been having whatever argument or stress going on at school or you're having some kind of conversation with your friends or whatever that's not going to be relaxing if those messages continue to come so do yourself a favor and say good night to everyone and switch off your um, all of your gadgets an hour before you want to go to sleep so that's the first thing then getting daylight, um, getting light out of your bedroom. You can still keep a bedside light on or something like that because that's not going to make any difference at all. It's a different sort of um, light wave. So other than that, think of some things that you can do in that hour which are going to be calming, winding down, relaxing things. So um, it would be a good idea to put on some uh, quiet, soft, slow perhaps music. Um, it'd be a good idea if you want to have a bath or a shower to get into your um, clothes for bed to put all your work away get it off your desk get it out of sight um, get it ready anything you need to take to school in the morning get all that ready and put it away from your bed put it by the door psychologically that will have the effect of moving it out of your brain you won't have to think about it if it's all ready and it's all out of sight and ready for, for the morning and then um, you might, if you want to, if you do yoga, then that would be a good thing to do. Anything, any kind of fast exercise, like going for a run, is not a good idea um, before bedtime. But something like yoga, which will slow your heart rate down and relax you, is a good idea. Um, another thing is reading a book. Reading for pleasure. You might think you don't have time for that anymore because you're so busy with exams. But actually one of the best things that you can do to switch away from your worries to switch into a relaxing mode so that you can get the best night's sleep possible is to continue to read for pleasure. And reading for pleasure means reading something that you want to read. So not something um, from your schoolwork, not something you've been told you should read, but something you want to read. It doesn't matter whether it's um, light and easy or more difficult and complex. It has to be something that you want to read and that you can kind of bury yourself in. And that would be a really, really good way um, of relaxing and winding down. And ideally, do that after once you've got into bed because one of the things that lots of people notice about reading is that it relaxes us so much that it makes us start to feel sleepy. But if you can't get to sleep and you start to go over in your mind um, those worries, then there are a couple of things that um, scientists say are a really good idea and they're things that I have tried as well. Um, so the first thing would be if you have a particular worry that is going over in your mind, then write it down on a piece of paper and put it away, put it over away from you, over by the door or something. Then you need to replace that worry with some kind of positive thought. And what I tend to do is I like to imagine myself in the most relaxing place possible. And for me, it might be different for you, but for me that is on a white sandy beach with the uh, noise of the gentle waves in the distance and the sky is blue and I've got palm trees, no one else is there. So I build up this picture in my mind, add in loads and loads of detail um, and then I find that I have fallen asleep. And then the next night, if the same thing happens again, you go back to that same um, fantastic place that you created in your mind, take yourself back there and add in some more details and very, very likely you will find that um, you have fallen asleep and you've had the best sleep possible.
But another very, very useful thing that you can learn to do, which will help you get to sleep, but it can also be used when you're under stress in other situations, for example, in an exam. And this is the anti-panic strategy that I mentioned earlier. If you go to www.nicolamorgan.com and you look in the Teenage Brain and Stress section, you will find a free um, audio that you can download. It's four minutes long, but once you've listened to it a few times, you will just be able to do it without listening to the audio. You'll be able to do it yourself in just one minute. And it takes one minute to take your body from that overstressed situation down to something much more manageable. So you can use that if, you ha if you're having trouble getting to sleep. But as I say, you can also use it when you're um, panicking in an exam or you're just feeling stressed for whatever reason at all. You'll find loads more advice about how to get to sleep more easily and also all the other aspects of exams and stress and the best food to take with you for exams and everything um, on my website. But you'll also find it um, in the Teenage Guide to Stress. I'm not very good at holding it in the right place. There we are, the Teenage Guide to Stress. I just want to say now, thank you very much to Queen Elizabeth's Grammar School Lancashire for being interested. Thank you for listening. And most of all, look after your brain. It's in your hands, you have a lot more control than you think, and good luck. Good luck in your exams, and good luck in everything else that you do. And remember, when I answer questions from schools, I name check the school here. So ask.